all the sheets we've looked at up to this point really are the ones you're going to use on a, on a weekly basis that give you your, your uh, production numbers and breakdowns of what you've done. I'm going to summarize the rest of these sheets all together because uh, there's not a lot of uh, complexity to them and they're more just for reference. So this one here is our startup costs. This is just a list of sort of things you're going to need to think about when, when you're going to start up and assuming you have nothing to start off with. And so this is not built into our overhead costs. This is built into upfront costs, which you might want to add into your first year of production, which means you're going to not make any money in year one. You're going to, you're going to lose money, as you should in the first year of a business. It's, you would borrow money and you would pay that money back. And so that's essentially what you would do. So this just breaks down a whole bunch of different things here uh, with some short uh, explanations, and they're broken down by, by cost. So you can take a look at that. And there's a $1,500 buffer just built in there at the end. So uh, you can take a look and that'll give you a sense of um, uh, some of the things to consider when starting up because you're going to need to buy a lot of equipment to start off. I mentioned this in the crop planning uh, spreadsheet. It ex itself is very complicated because you're looking at future dates to determine what to do now. Uh, but as I said, you're going to get into a routine. And so this one just sort of breaks down uh, two different ways of looking at what a, what a week might look like. And I haven't found the best way to, uh, to to do this yet, so I just broke it down in two different ways. That just shows the different types of um, uh, tasks you might do on a certain day. So so the, the first one here is just basically based on what's going to happen on a day-to-day -day basis. But the second one here kind of shows how one process leads into the next over more than a week and how they overlap. So you're going to soak crops here. You're going to sow them, you're going to sow the long season crops and the short uh, crops. Uh, and then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to uncover them and then you're going to harvest them. So that's the flow. But that's for your, for your, for your, uh, for your Tuesday harvest. Simultaneously for your Friday harvest, you're going to be doing all these things. You've got a short uh, cycle crop here and then you're doing another soak and another sowing and uncovering and then you getting your getting your harvests on, on these other days on the Friday. So this is just one way of looking at the flow and how it overlaps. And this is just looking at, at, a, at a typical week with the Sunday showing twice. So it's just like Sunday to Sunday is where you start that cycle again. So you can see your sowing for certain things is going to be the same all the time on Mondays and Tuesdays, and Thursdays and Fridays. You're going to do all that stuff. So uh, you get into a routine very quickly. And as you change uh, seasons, you might change your sowing schedules a little bit, but otherwise you're going to get uh, pretty consistent. This is a little uh, just uh, table to look at pricing uh, of your crop. And it's a very difficult thing to do. And so this basically has here um, prices here. So these are different prices I can charge. These are different numbers of uh, units, uh, uh, small unit equivalents I might get out of a single tray. And here I'm using sunflower as an example. And this would be the equivalent weight that if I was getting those units out. So if I was just going to do two units of sunflower per tray, they'd be 325 grams. If I was going to do seven, they'd be 93 grams. And so if you look at if I was to do 93 grams and charge $3 each, a tray is worth $21. If I was to do 93 uh, seven at 93 grams and charge eight dollars be 56 dollars per tray so the question is can i do that for sunflower can i sell 93 grams of sunflower for eight dollars and if so a tray is now worth 56 dollars potentially that assumes i sell everything at that that rate and as you know uh, we're not selling just small price small units we're selling small medium large trays things like that but this is a reference because you often sell more of the small units than any other type of unit because they are such a small volume you sell lots of them so what i'm looking for is sort of this yellow band in here is probably the the sweet spot that allows you to generate revenue at a reasonable return and uh and 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 set the price at something that the, the market can bear uh, and there's going to be differences so if i look at about 130 grams and i think our sunflower right now is 125 and our pricing at the market is about five dollars so for a tray of sunflower it's worth about 25 dollars despite what we looked at earlier 
and if I go up to $8, it's worth about $40 a tray. Now, the reason I like having this $8 figure in here is because I may not charge $8, but a grocer I sell to might, which means if I'm selling at $5.50, they're marking it up to $8. I'm just getting a better sense of, of how price changes depending on the retailer, what the actual value of that tray is. And once again, if, if the uh, grocer is selling at $8 and they're not selling very well, then I need to think about maybe reducing my wholesale price so they can bring it down to seven. You got to find that spot where you're going to get consistent sales. So selling to like, uh, like a few pounds to a restaurant over several uh, weeks over the course of a year is relatively easy. But how do you get that restaurant to buy many, many pounds twice a week, every week for, for many years? It's repeat business that is going to do you um, your business a lot of success. The more repeat business you have, the less marketing you need to do to find more business. And marketing takes time and, and takes uh, uh, has a cost to it. So this here also breaks it down. This here breaks, breaks it down into what's the cost to the customer per gram. And we can see here, if, if we have this one price, they're basically paying, you know, 60 cents per gram. Um, but uh, when you get into, is that right? That is not right. <laughs> um, that's based like 60 cents per gram. Actually, this is the 60 cents per gram is what the 93 is worth. That is not what the customers pay. <laughs> so I just need to recalculate that um, or relabel that. Um, so yeah, so what I'm trying to look at here is just it's the same thing. You're seeing the same pattern here, right? Uh, it's slightly different, but you're just seeing what it looks like on a, on a per gram basis. So people look at things different ways, and I like to present them in different ways to try and accommodate that for people. So I'll change that later. Uh, here's a sample of what the hours look like for the food peddlers over a season. So e each of these lines is a different month. So you can see in some months on Tuesdays, uh, as production goes up, so do labor costs. Uh, whereas some days like Wednesdays and Sundays, they kind of stay in a, in a tight little formation. Lots of different factors in these things, um, but uh, sometimes it's just nice to look at that. Uh, this is a, a calculator if you're trying to figure out, um, you want to work out your seed density. So we did everything. So I do all my sewing by volume. I take a scoop of a specific volume and that's what I sew. But it's because I know a certain volume corresponds to a certain weight and that's how I do my calculations. So this is just something you can use to do quick calculations of seed. Uh, and I won't walk through it. It's all pretty self-explanatory just by, by filling in the categories here to get a sense of um, what you think you're going to sow and what the cost will look like. Uh, here you can just put a list if you are... Um, uh, this is a, so a sample seed cost calculator. So once again, if you've got three different types of seed coming into a shipment and each has their uh, a cost to them, which would be here, and then your total cost here, you've also got a shipping cost. And so what you do is you take that shipping cost of $206, you divide it by the number of kilograms you're having, and then you assign a, a value per kilogram, and then you give that to each of your crops. So a kilogram of radish costs the same to, to ship as a kilogram of, of pea. So you can see that radish that um, comes uh, comes to about two hundred and fourteen dollars. Um, my uh, that, or the, the cost per kilogram of the seed is, is worked out here, and then I get a sense of what's my seed cost with shipping. That's not right either. <laughs> Uh, I'll take a look at that. So I'll correct that. But this is a good way. I, I mentioned earlier, if you're going to do your, you have two options here. You, I uh, hope that you're finding this very humorous, by the way. Um, you can, um, you can take your delivery charges and put them in your overhead costs. You can just separate them from your seeds completely, but you can't have seeds without delivery costs. So I tie them together. So if you are going to tie them together, that's how you need to use them for calculations uh, within the within the uh, calculators that are given. And so this is just a way of, of, of calculating that. And uh, yeah, I just got to you know, work that out. That's just a, a formula error that I overlooked there. Here, this is just an archive. So when you make a purchase, you just make a, a, a list, a, a record of it here. And this just gives you a quick reference. So over time, you can go to one place and see 
what you paid for the seed, how much you bought, when you bought it, who you bought it from, things like that. So this is just a good record to have for quick reference, and you might as well have it in here with all the other uh, data you've got. This here is a reference sheet for sanitizing your seed. So in Canada, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency recommends uh, sanitizing your seed before sowing to reduce the risk of pathogens. I won't get into that here. Um, and they recommend a five to one uh, seeds uh, a sanitizer solution to seed weight ratio. Now we don't do that. We do a three or a two to one because it reduces our costs and we think does just as good a job. And so we have a calculator here to work that out all for us. And so this calculator works whether you're using bleach at 200 parts per million or Sanidate at 147 parts per million. And this tells you basically for one tray of sunflower at a rate of 3 to 1, so our sanitizer to seed ratio is 3 to 1 at these different ratios. Uh, I use concentrated bleach because you can get concentrated and regular, but concentrated is becoming much more common on the market now. And if it doesn't say on the label, you can contact the companies to be uh, sure. Um, so for one tray of sunflower, I need uh, uh, 40 milliliters or 400 milliliters of water or 0.4 liters. I would need one milliliter of bleach and or one milliliter of, of Sanidate in order to, to, to do that. Now I'm probably more likely to do 20 trays. So for that, I'm going to need 8.1 liters of water. 19.6 uh, milliliters of bleach or 20.3 milliliters of sanidate. So it's just a it's it's, it's a quick reference if I'm sanitizing uh, 20 trays of, of, of uh, sunflower. These are the numbers to use. What's interesting here is the cost difference. Uh, it's about 35 times more expensive to use sanidate than bleach. Uh, however, um, it is just a more ecologically friendly. Uh, approach and I do not believe you can use bleach for sanitizing seed in certified organic systems in Canada so you are required to use Sanidate. Over the cost of the season we saw previously that it doesn't end up being a huge cost but it could be way way less expensive if, if you could use bleach you just can no longer do that. Uh, if you're using uh, bleach what you might use bleach for is cleaning surfaces things like that uh, your greenhouse your sinks your shelves things like that so uh, you can actually use this if you've got a one liter bottle, then you can use this to do a, a calculation basically. You know, 1.2 liters requires this much bleach, 0.8 requires this much. Um, uh, this is just another calculator. So you just, same thing, using the, the green, um, the green uh, uh, cells there to enter your data. So really, really quick reference. So that's the last uh, sheet that's included in here. There's a ton of information in this spreadsheet. I know you've probably looked at a lot of tutorials by this time, but I hope you have the resources you need now to make good decisions in your microgreens business. So good luck.